Our album of the week is brought to us by a hipster icon and the quick cash grab after his death. As many graphic tees and specialized shoes you could throw your wallet at. I mean, damn, those vans are sexy. Just, just, just take my money. It's David Bowie and his new collection of ditties. Low. Released on January 14th, 1977, without any promotional singles, the album still managed to chart number two in Britain and number 11 in the U.S. Because why put out singles when you're David Bowie? Like, people will catch up, I'm sure, and if they don't, well, fuck them. History's on your side, David. Fresh off succeeding at every Brit's goal since the Beatles of conquering America with his single fame top in the charts david was at an all-time high literally heavily addicted to cocaine he decided to move to berlin with iggy pop to find some peace of mind and clear his nostrils peace the first word we all think of when it comes to germany in the 20th century this would start what became known as the berlin trilogy with low leading the way cleverly titled low because emotionally bowie was feeling low it's genius. On release, the album was met with a mixed reaction from critics. Nerd! But over time has been recognized as one of the most brilliant masterpieces of all time. Pitchfork gave it a 10 out of 10 and ranked it as the best album of the decade. Rolling Stone has ranked it 251st on their 500 greatest albums of all time. But who cares? The only thing that matters is what we think. So let's get to it. Welcome to our debut series of the Weekly Roundup. I'm your host, I, I think, uh, Shane Taylor. And with me is... Your co-host, Cedric. We're co-hosts, but he has to say host. And for the debut Weekly Roundup, we're going to be doing Low by David Bowie. Initially rejected by RCA Records. For? They told him to go to Philly and make another Young Americans. Which he did not he do. He did not ever again. Probably probably for the best. Okay. Yeah, no, we're better for it. Alright, and we're going to get into that. Uh, we're going to be going track by track, going along, and we have a tier set up. I think probably the best way to do it, with three being the highest tier, so the songs we enjoyed the most, one being the lowest, and two being... The middle! Uh, the glorious middle. Smart. Smart boy. Alright, so, for the first track, we have Speed of Light. Speed of life. Speed of life. Speed of life. Uh, first thoughts? Would it almost thing? sounds like a song. Okay. It's perfectly set up you're, where you're like, oh, okay, the lyrics are going to kick in now, and then they don't. Okay. Because most instrumental, it kind of drifts, it kind of goes, mm -hmm. this strict structure, here's your verse, here's your bridge, here's your chorus. And you're like, this could be a great song, and it's still great, even though we just decided not to put words on it. All right, and... I have uh, rock instrumental, mm -hmm. just basic, but it's, it's really heavy. Probably one of the more heavier songs on the album, the most rocky. Yeah, but perhaps. Um, it works as the first track, mm. but I think if you put it anywhere else, it would suffer and it wouldn't, it wouldn't carry the same momentum of what's going to be. It couldn't it. lead off the instrumental side of the album, like uh, Art Decade or whatever it does. Right. Yeah. It has to be right there. Yeah, the first the first track. Uh, what tier do you have that in? I have that in three. Sorry, no, three's best, right? Three's the best, yes. I have that in one. Okay, so the opposite. Yes. Uh, opposite of the best. Yes. Okay, yeah. um, near the top? Near the bottom? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine? Yeah. It's fine. I have it in tier two, but it's one of the lower ones. Like I said, I think it, it works because it's the first track. I think if it was anywhere else, it would just be a, a throwaway type of track. If we had a tier two and a half, it'd be right there. Yeah, for me. Not yeah, quite yeah. a three, but... Yeah. Uh, second, we have Breaking Glass. Thoughts on that one? It's my favorite on the album. Is it? It's got this fucking incredible... It, this that rhythm just kicks in right away. Right. And what I like about it is, you know that old like Hemingway story where he's like, I'll pay my bar tab by writing a story in six words? Mm -hmm. Yes. But we just, like, it's only 12 words. Right. But, like, the chorus still tells a story. For sure. She's a wonderful person, but she got problems. I actually... I'll never touch you. 
I actually wrote that specific lyric down. That's probably my second favorite lyric on the entire album. I think that, that run really sticks with me and works really it's well just, for me, especially with the theme. It's so quick, too. Yeah. I have... Where do I have this? I have it tier three. So let's do The highest, it. yes. Uh, I have it as my third favorite song on the album. Third? I like the album. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I said uh, some notes were about as frantic and erratic as a song can be. So it's no surprise that it's about his low addiction. But with great low end, that like that rhythm at the bottom really yeah. stabilizes yeah. it. Um, I love the screeching guitars, and I love the synth sound that it has, how it kind of pierces on the right headphone. For like 77, 78 when this was? Mm -hmm. This is a really yeah. good synth. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like for, the 80s was going to be corny. It's probably the first one ever made. Yeah, and, and, like, and it was so good. Yeah, it sounds great. And then, yeah, I have short and to the point, and I love this track. Like I said, it's in my tier three, and it's one of my favorite songs on the album. Mm -hmm. uh, for track three, we have What in the World. Once again, thoughts. I couldn't really decide. Okay. I have it in tier two and a half. Okay. Which is, I have no idea which one. Oh, either, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, is it are a two, you, is it a three? I, I don't have it up there with mm. Breaking Glass and another one that we'll come to, but it's so good. Yeah. That I want to hold it above everything else. Okay. I just, it's not a... Like, the structure is so loose, mm. but it's not as good as, like, a Breaking Glass where okay. it feels loose, but there's a clear pattern. Okay. That's, so that's, yeah. that's where I was pretty much in the same boat. I have it as the top of my tier two. Mm -hmm. So didn't quite make it. Um, yeah, it. I find it's in between the last song, Breaking Glass, and what the next song is going to be, Sound and Vision. But it doesn't quite hit the greatness of either one of those tracks. Yeah. So it's kind of... I'm the opposite of best of both worlds, the middle, yeah. the middlest of both worlds. We love uh, the middle. I don't know what the instrument is, but that bubbly. The oh, dude, do, 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 I, I how don't... many times on this album are you just like, what the fuck am I? Yeah, is that really for sure? Ah, oh. yeah. But yeah, I like it, and mm -hmm. probably yeah, it is probably my favorite lyric on the album, which is uh, I'm just a little bit afraid of you because I'm gonna make you cry. Wait I think it's, crack, crack. Yeah, it's one of the more, I don't know, it's like a neurotic diss and self holding at the same time, which is perfect for, once again, the theme of the album. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of confidence and a lot of self-doubt. <laughs> it's not a very positive theme. No, it's that. <laughs> okay. Alright, next we have track four, Sound and Vision. You're not fucking fooling me, Bowie. This isn't a song. This okay. is, there's no real chorus. He seems like he's trying to make it sound like a chorus. Like, oh, look, these are linked. Just because he says sound and vision a couple times. Okay. But they're not at the same part of the song. They're not really related. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me laugh. Like, I'm just going to say it a couple times. And I'll call it a chorus. Okay. But really, it's just, it's like an instrumental break for the album almost. Okay. Because he doesn't really, like, there's, what, 20 seconds of the lyrics? Maybe 30? It's, like, it's, it's a minute and a half. Of instrumental, I tracked it out, and it's like maybe like two, it's what like two forty-five or something, so like a minute. Yeah, like it's it's a break. It's supposed to slow it down a bit. Okay. Now I really like the song. Yeah. Um, I had it in tier two. Okay. Okay. Uh, slight disagreement on this one. Not not an egregious disagreement, but a slight one. Okay. I have it as my second favorite song on the album. Ooh. Another one of the Ooh. three songs that are in my. Tier 3. Um, I wrote down, it's probably the best groove of the album, and for me, that kind of works of letting it breathe for a minute and a half of instrumental, because it just, it doesn't lose you, it just keeps moving. I, I love how, it is the most groove-based song, it just kind of carries it. It's very pretty, which, I don't know if you know this, and listening to the, you know, listen to it again, mm -hmm. first listen through, that this was the first promotional single he put out, I mean, he didn't do any singles before the actual album, but after the album was released, he made some singles. And this was the first one he picked, and this was the only one to actually chart in England and America. Well, the 
those people are wrong. <laughs> They're just I also, wrong. I wrote that it's probably my favorite of David's vocals in Side A. I think it's kind of the prettiest melody for being, as you say, kind of just a couple words thrown out. But I think it sounds great. Also, something that I noticed, I don't know if you noticed this, but um, it's the only song that has any trace of the Young American phase where it actually has female vocals. It's only in one part for oh, that's true. two seconds, but it's the only one that actually has a female vocalist. That's true, I didn't and, think of that. Yeah. Uh, track five is Always Crashing in the Same Car. Thoughts on that one? Yeah. you say that louder? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm, like, I like, I get the point. Like, it, I thought the previous track was the slowdown. Okay. But it, it, it wasn't. This is a slower song. Yeah, the last track was the single. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> that felt like the, like the slowdown break. Yeah. Which he did not think it was. So I get why this has to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I li again, I like it. Okay. But, like, all these songs, my, eh, I don't know, is like a yeah, tier two... Okay. Top notch song. It's just the highs are so just out there that it's hard to. Yeah, if it's on, you'll listen to it, but it'll never yeah, be your it's... first, like, I gotta hear this song today yeah. when you wake up. And, you know. Okay, um, so once again. Wake up? It's like, no. yes, <laughs> no. I'm gonna listen to David Bowie. That's the first thought I have. Um, Existential I... Dread and then David Bowie. Yeah, exactly. It's a quick switch, though. Uh, I have it as the last of my tier three. I have it as the best song on the album. It's one of my favorite David Bowie songs, perhaps, ever. Oh, I, okay. We have a... For, uh, the theme, of course, is you keep doing something and it keeps coming back to bite you in the ass. You know, hence the always crashing in the same car. I love the theme. And for whatever reason, it seems to relate with me on some level. <laughs> I, I don't know why that is, but I, it seems to hit home with how I am as a person. These so, mistakes keep happening randomly and yeah. ruining me. I don't understand. Yeah. All these dumb things I do keep coming to bite me back and I don't learn my lesson and what I always I have to do? pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, my favorite song. I do love how it is slowed down. I think it works. I, especially because, like I said, I think Time and Vision is one of the catchiest songs to throw that right after. Bring the mood down. Sounds great. And the mix... This is probably one of my favorite mixes on the album. I just love how everything punches properly and everything settles in nice. So yeah, I have it as the best song on the album for, for me. Alright, and this this one's gonna be your moment. Yeah, this is the this, this is the this one is you're you. just wrong on. This, this is this you. is I know I said uh, it's track six, uh, Be My Wife, which is the second single after yeah. Sound Division, which for some reason. Which charted nowhere. Again, people are wrong. They are bad. So you want to talk about mix and catchiness. First of all, there are a ton of instruments that play different roles in this one. You've got piano used as percussion, mm -hmm. and you've got the 50s little rock guitar at the start. Oh, the piano, you mean? No, but there's a guitar, too. Oh, I love the piano in it. That's my favorite part. Yeah, well, because I also like love a... it as a percussion. Yeah. Like, it's the low end. Yeah. Um, the bass, obviously, it's higher. Mm -hmm. So you're not just down there um, in the 70s. Hard rock guitars that come in. Yes. And it's just a great fucking chorus. It's so goddamn catchy. This if, Of all the Bowie songs that I've heard... This is going to be the most... Uh, shine a light on our thoughts and feelings about what makes a good pop song. Of because... all the Bowie songs that I've heard, this is the one that I want to just sing when I'm just walking around. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's my favorite song on the album. And so, tier three, number one. Yes. Okay. So well mixed. Is that your first tier no. three? No, you had Breaking Glass, right? That's right. Okay. The two best songs on the album. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I I have it as tier two, mm -hmm. second favorite behind What in the World. Um. I put down sometimes you get so lonely, which I quoted as emotional dependence has never sounded so much fun. I love that idea of the song. Uh, we mentioned the piano at the beginning. Uh -huh. I love the piano. And this is the difference. The same way you love how it's so direct, which is something that always gets you, is something that always pisses me off, is I find the theme super generic and just kind of like a boring sentiment, which is, like I said, where we disagree. The idea just be my wife. And that's your carrying theme. I find it a little 
childish, I guess. Well, that's why the the old like Hank Williams country songs are so are so good. They're like, yeah, this is the thing. They're gonna change, or I'm gonna leave. Well, what about the like the the depth and what's the situation? No, no, no. These are the things that need to change. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. Yeah, that's all you need, Bowie. It's, it's fair, right? You it, should be you should be my wife. Yeah. It's yeah. the most, <laughs> it's the most disgusting. I'm not actually gonna ask you. Yes, you please be mine. Or put in any me. effort. Then I know it's not a celebration. It's more of a just, just do I it, need please. Something. Yeah, just do it. Uh, the bed gets cold. Yeah, I knew we would have a slight disagreement on this, but even then, I don't know. Tier two, second yeah. best song. It's it's mm-hmm. not. You know, I'm not hating on it. I also just it's the one that if I'm walking and I have a shuffle on, it's the one I'm gonna stay mm-hmm. on. I the mean, other ones, I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait. And then a minute in, I'm like, oh, right, there's no lyrics yet. Right. Let's, let's go next. Let's start. Uh, speaking of no lyrics and next, oh, track yeah, seven, me, the me. last song on side A, uh, A New Career in Town. Let's talk about that in great detail. Let me just put all my notes to the side yes. and just sink back and ignore this mm-hmm. because that's what David did with this side of the album. Yeah, I don't understand... No, no, side. This is on the same side. Yeah, but it's side But a. why is it on I don't know. side I don't A? It makes know. no sense. It's <laughs> neither interesting enough to be on second side, and it's not just, like, fun enough to be on the first one. You know what I think it was? I think he had Art uh, art Decade and Worcester Sauce, and he was like... Worcester Sauce? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Who Worcester cares? It's Poland. <laughs> Who cares about Europe? Right. Um, I think he had no those offense. two. Mm, a little. No offense. <laughs> I think he had those two, and he was like... Okay, this needs to be one and two on the side. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to leave them there. And whatever we can shove on side A to fill time, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. For me, it's a a nothing track. I don't don't even know why it's there when you could have finished off with Be My Wife. Maybe you didn't want to finish off on a high, but wouldn't that work going into the second side, which we're going to get into right now? I have it in tier, why should I? Oh, yeah, I have it, yeah. Yeah, Tier one as in, like, skip and don't even. What? You exist. Cool. Unless you want to be different for the sake of being different, Don't. then that's yeah, your song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, side B is a Worcester sauce, as mm-hmm. you called it. Worcester sauce. Again, that's sorry about pronouncing Belgium, Belgium, right? Poland. Whatever. European countries. All right. Thoughts on Worcester sauce? It. Okay. I'm not a fan of most instrumental like pieces mm-hmm. of an album. Unless I'm listening to, like, a purely instrumental album. Mm -hmm. But this is just really beautiful. Like a Brian Eno? (laughs) Uh, It's just... It's, like, really art. Mm -hmm. Music is just whatever. But then sometimes it's just, like, legitimately, like, painting-level beautiful. Yeah. That's how I feel about this. This is the only one on this side... Mm -hmm that I'll have and never skip. Okay. So, and tier two, just because it's not on the heights. Yes. But it would be up there in that tier. Okay. I have it as the worst one on tier two. Okay. So, I still enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, like I said, it's art, right? We're getting into the music is going to kind of slow down and it's mm-hmm. more... It's when they it's put, more, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's good. It's good. But it, it's when they took Bowie's Coke away and started giving him Miles Davis heroin. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this Everything new... slowed down. Exactly. For sure. So yeah, I, I enjoy it. Um, I don't think it's as good as the next song. I mean, it's as good, but it's six minutes and 32 seconds, which is a tough go through for a whole... Yeah. Song. Yeah, you skip a little bit in. Yeah. But, I don't know. I like it. I mean, they're all not caring about run times or structure. Or... Weirdly enough, this is the longest song on Side B, I believe. Is it? it I think it, so. it blends together. Yeah, it, do, it does. It's, 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 it's what, 19 time. minutes, I think, the whole side? So, it's all just kind of it's one thing. Long. Except for one song, which I'll get into soon. Uh, track 9. Like I just said, Art Decade. Thoughts on that one? The only other instrumental that's, like, worthy of tier two. Everything else, like, past this, I kind of just usually cut off the album. Okay. Because I don't really care about it. it. 
at a certain point, and maybe it's just because we're not too deep into the instrumentals yet. So yeah, you just like, get tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I like our decade. Uh, I think. I don't know. I don't want to say it's unstructured after the last song, which right. was long and didn't care, but it's just, again, it doesn't feel like it's tight, you know? Okay. And so it's tier two. It's the last song where I'm like, okay, I'll listen to it on this album. Okay. And then the rest are just instrumental. So I'm not sure what your uh, last two tiers are going to be. <laughs> um, yeah, I have it in second tier. Mm -hmm. I have it third from the bottom. So I have Warsaw Saw below it and Speed of Life below it. Um, I love this song because the second I heard it, I thought, like, this is video game music. Like, this would be amazing in, like, Final Fantasy or something. Like, that's the, the right where my brain went to. I'm like, why is this not in a video game? I assume publishing is a reason. But, think. <laughs> yeah, it might just be me, but that, that's why I like it, I guess, because that's exactly what my brain went to. And I think it it's so easy when you do an instrumental side to be doing it for self-indulgent reasons and it coming across as very just, oh, I'm Yeah, almost all the time it is. Yeah. But for this, once again, it it feels more on the artistic side. I think he really succeeds in doing what he did on the last song as well. I just think, once again, it's three minutes shorter and it's like the video game kind of element to it. I wonder how much of the art feel is because it legitimately deserves it and how much is it's like, Oh, it's not some bad prog rock band, it's David Bowie! Yeah, yeah, are you, are you getting by on your name looking <laughs> yeah. back? Yeah, for sure. Um, then we have second last song on the album, track 10, Weeping Wall. I just gotta say about that, tier one, just just skip it. Um, <laughs> wow, I do not like the song. This is apparently the only song that David did all on his own, and... For me, it sounds like it sounds like he just put an infant in a studio, recorded it playing a xylophone, and decided I'm gonna make a terrible song around this. I hate this song. What's funny? I do not like a new career in town, but this, oh my god, this is an awful song. Oh, <laughs> for Warsaw. Yeah. The melody was actually based around a kid, just playing around in oh, the really? studio. Oh really? That's funny. It's better. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this this is oh. skip immediately. Yep. It doesn't exist. There's 10 songs on the album, not 11. I have nothing to say about this. Yeah, it's probably why I consider there to be 9 songs. It's because you have to get past number 10 to get we're, to 11. We're gonna just, there you go, 11. So, speaking of Subterraneans, number 11, last track on the album. I'll let you go first on that one. No. Because no. I did not listen to it that hard. I yeah. just always felt bored by the end, and I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm actually, because I did this twice, mm -hmm. so I listened to, like, the A side, just as the A side, and then kind of built myself up to tackle what was going to be side B, so I wasn't, I wasn't like, that's tired how, of the album, I hadn't gone... That's how you know when album's really good, by the way, and the second half is really deserving of praise. It's well, I just to build yourself up to listen to it. I, that's like, like, I, it's I, easy I, to listen to. I listened to the first side so many times that it was more like just... It was validating why I like it. So yeah, that side B was actually like a new listening experience going in, like, I have to do this, and let's see how it goes. Because I always kind of shut it out. Yeah, side one starts, is right? fun, and side two is art. Yeah, art is... Not fun! Overrated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I actually love this song. I cannot believe I've gone my whole life, and doing this has been great because I found a new gem that I actually genuinely love, and it's one of my more enjoyable David Bowie songs in his catalog. I have it um, third on tier two. So it's the most 2.5 <laughs> of any of the songs. Um, yeah, I have, it's easily the prettiest. I, I knew you wouldn't like it because I knew you'd be sick of the album before you got there. God damn right. And I knew that I would have to carry this and kind of explain yeah, why I love it so much. Um, or you could just not listen to Subterraneans. No one would blame you. Don't listen to him. Uh, <laughs> either one, no one would blame you. Yeah, either. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I have... It is the prettiest song on the album. Uh, Sound and Vision is the prettiest song of side one, in my opinion. Side B, it... This is an amazing song. It's... It sounds pretentious, but it... I mean, maybe it's a saxophone. I feel like saxophone seems to do this, but it's the most spiritual-esque type of song. It's a perfect rounding out of 
You made it less pretentious by talking about the saxophone. The saxophone saved it? Yeah. yeah. That's that's what made it not pretentious. Yes. I, uh, I don't know if you made it to the end, but David actually sings at the end. Didn't make it that far. Sounds oh, amazing. The I've melody, it, the melody sounds fantastic. I've made it to the song, and I've listened, and I'm like, I don't want to be listening to this. Yeah. I. So I'm just not listening. It's the first song where... Because David's a good singer, but on this album, I think he's intentionally not trying to be a great melodic soft he's, singer like he's barely singing it's it's song. very punchy it's very just kind of like hitting points and you're not really going for like a pretty melody i think this song is like one of the few ones where it's like it's easy flowing it sounds amazing i love it it's the perfect ending to the album and it's my new favorite song on side b and it's like i said one of my new favorite david Bowie songs and luckily for doing this i was able to actually focus and have to do this and I got a new song out of it, which is cool. On an album that I already loved and already enjoyed like listening to pretty consistently. So you're telling me you didn't consider the Inuit throat singing on Warsaw to be melodic great singing? <laughs> you can say it. I'm not going to say it. Uh, so, yeah. That's the album. Awesome listen. David Bowie's David is Bowie. Is this your favorite David Bowie album? It's my default go-to. Yeah. But then I'm always like, oh, I don't there's gotta be something else. And then I'll like listen to a different album and be like, oh no, this is my favorite one. And then I come back to this and I'm like, oh no. This is this is it's never this is the David Boy. It's never Ziggy Stardust. You like Ziggy? Yeah, it's never one. Ziggy's oh, never one. No, I don't know. They're the one that everyone's like, oh, this is the David Bowie album that's that you have to. I think listen it's because it was the fresh yeah, one. It was yeah, it was new. Yeah. Yeah. So great album. But yeah, yeah I think yeah, Lowe's my favorite, so Ratings and I'm not. I, I did you are you gonna rate? Because I'm not big on it. Because it's all kind of like I don't know how to just do a blanket rating for any genre and how they combine together. I, I mean, for what it is, it's I, an almost a perfect album. That's I, all I can really say about that. I rated it almost perfect out of five. Okay. I refuse to give it a number. Just almost perfect out of yeah, five. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel silly. Somewhere Putting between it. four and five. I don't know what the right number is. So 0. 0.75, 0. Almost 9, perfect. 5, 0. 0.5, you know, use your imagination on that. So, yeah, that is the end of the first weekly roundup. Of many more to come. Hopefully. And to be updated on these weekly roundups, hit the subscribe button after you hit the like button.